Joining me now is Rushir Sharma. He is the chairman of Rockefeller International and founder of Breakout Capital. It's great to see you, Rushir. Why do you think too gloomy? Well, because if you look at the relationship that emerging markets have had with commodity prices, it's been a very tight fit. And this goes back 30, 40 years, really since this asset class was conceived. And given how much commodity prices are up, you would expect emerging markets to be up a lot more. So I think that relationship has broken down. The last time the relationship broke down that way was back in 2001, 2002. And then we know what happened after that. There was a big boom which took place in emerging markets. So most emerging markets tend to be commodity exporters. And in an environment where we're seeing higher for longer commodity prices, I expect emerging markets to do much better in the years ahead. What about the dollar? Does the dollar have to go kind of back to a weakening trajectory in order to support that? Yes, usually that's the case. Now, all these things are interlinked. Higher commodity prices, weaker dollar, and therefore higher emerging markets, they all tend to be um, parts of the same story. And I think that we're seeing that. I know that um, you highlighted how much the emerging market ETF is down. But remember, all markets are down by a similar proportion this year. And that also is unusual because typically emerging markets have a higher beta than the rest of the world, the U.S. or other um, parts of Europe. But this time, they've all fallen exactly in line, which already tells me that that is a divergence that's opening up, that a lot of people have already exited emerging markets. Uh, the consensus is too pessimistic. And so, therefore, a lot of selling that's taking place. I mean, if you look at the outflows from, uh, from emerging markets, they've been very strong. Despite those massive outflows, the performance of emerging markets hasn't been that bad in an environment such as this. Right, like you're saying, they should be down 30% if the s and is down 15 or whatever. So exactly. should people do, you know, get exposure through something as broad as the EEM, or are there specific emerging markets that you think especially are a good opportunity right now? Yeah, I think buying the EEM is a bad idea just because it's got such large exposure to countries like China and other commodity importers. And the Latin American ETF, I think, is a better idea if you really want to play the commodity Boom, but otherwise, you know, with people who are much more selective about this, I think countries in uh, the Middle East could do very well. The domestic demand there could do extremely well. I think that similarly, some of the beaten down markets of Eastern Europe uh, may do much better. But generally, I think that we have to be cautious about EEM because of the large exposure that has to countries such as China. And one of the most underreported stories uh, this year really is what's happening in China, even through this crisis. Over the past two or three weeks, some of the most significant weakness we have seen is in China. The equity market and the property market there is still melting down. The high yield spreads in China are still blowing out. So this yes. whole notion, that, you know, that this geopolitical notion that China is, uh, you know, going to be a beneficiary of what's going on out here. Well, guess what? If you look at the market indicators, the domestic indicators, China's economy is in serious trouble or in a lot of trouble and something that I think is off the radar. Could you just follow up on that, Rushir, to sort of what should investors do then now they've already taken all of these losses? Yeah, so I think that as far as China is concerned, I, uh, I would still be underweight China significantly and, and keep clear of that market. But I think many of these other commodity exporting countries in general, I think are going to do quite well. I think some of the domestic demand plays, whether it's in some of these Middle Eastern economies from Saudi Arabia, UAE, or places in Latin America that Seema highlighted at the top of the yeah. show just now, from Brazil to Colombia, I think all these countries are poised to do quite well. And I think that the um, these equity markets could well return double digits every year for the next five, 10 years. So that's the place to be. Fascinating. Rashir, great to have you today. Thank you so much. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.